welcome to day four of the free foraging week. Um, today, really, really, really important herb that we're talking about. Um, arguably the most important herb that is available to us to forage, you know, in Britain and in Europe. Um, and it's completely different to what we should be talking about today. So originally, we were meant to be talking about cleaver's water, okay, which is a brilliant, um, you know, a cold infusion that you can make using cleavers. Um, but we, we discussed cleavers on Monday, so you guys will know, or Tuesday rather, so you guys will know um, what cleavers is good for. Um, and we'll still send you the recipe for how to make the, the cold water, the cold infused cleavers water. But Something really exciting, if you're a herb geek like me, something really ex uh, exciting happened this morning. I went out for an early walk with the dog and I found the first hawthorn flowers, the first hawthorn blossoms of the year, which is really early actually. Usually they are out in about mid-April, uh, maybe the second week, yeah, first, second week of April. Um, but, you know, I found the first, there's only one tree, so it's still really early, but hawthorn flowers, in the spring and hawthorn berries in the autumn um, are absolutely a must forage for herb. It's, it's one of those mandatory herbs that if we're interested in our health, if we're interested in how to you know, use sustainable herbal medicines to keep ourselves as fit and healthy as we can, then hawthorn berry is just one of those herbs that we need to make use of. It's just, you know, I can't imagine going through a year and not taking advantage of hawthorn berry. Um, and the reason for that, the reason you know, why I put in the title, is this the most important wild medicine of them all? And the reason I think we should all be using hawthorn berry, I think, you know, um, is because of the role it plays on preventing heart disease. Okay, so heart disease um, in, its, in its full spectrum is still you know, the biggest killer in the Western world. You know, it kills more people than any other illness or group of pathologies in existence. Um, and the key thing about heart disease is such a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of it is genetically orientated. Most heart disease, well over 85%, is lifestyle caused. And what I'm not saying, I'm not saying that herbal medicines have the capacity to, um, you know, uh, antidote bad lifestyle behaviors because inactivity, stress, poor diets, all of those things conspire to increase our risk factors for heart disease uh, in its broadest sense. Heart attacks, coronary artery disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, the full gamut of, of issues. But what I am saying, and the evidence supports this, is that certain herbal medicines are profoundly effective, profoundly effective as a prophylaxis for heart disease as a preventative um, and there's not a, a herbal medicine on the planet not just in Britain or Europe, or Europe but globally there's not a herbal medicine on the planet that is as profound in its capacity to keep our heart and keep our cardiovascular system in absolute tip-top condition as the hawthorn tree it is just in a league of its own and it never ceases to amaze me that you know it's it is growing so abundantly. You can go into health food shops and you can buy hawthorn berry tincture and hawthorn flower teas and hawthorn this, that and the other. It's one of the biggest selling health you know, herbal supplements in, on, the, on the planet. Hawthorn berry sales are through the roof. But there is such a ridiculous abundance of it you know, growing just freely around us that we need to be taking advantage of this. We need to be using it. Um, and I think one of the things that we advocate a lot in you know in what we do and people we work with and in our online courses is, is this preventative model. Um, and if we're fit, we're healthy, we're well, the key is to keep ourselves that way. And that's that's particularly important with our heart and our cardiovascular system. And sipping you know, a couple of cups of hawthorn, hawthorn flower or hawthorn leaf tea a day, you know, every day or, or you know, four or five times a week as the months and years progress. That is such a brilliant, evidence-based, powerful way of just maximizing our hearts and our, our, our cardiovascular system's ability to not fall prey to heart disease, okay, or cardiovascular diseases. Um, 
And it's something that we always do. We, we, we use, we try and use Hawthorne in some capacity most days of the year, okay? Because if you do that, you know, it's, it's so protective of heart disease and the evidence supports that. Um, and Hawthorne is, is brilliant because it comes in two waves, okay? So you've got the flowers coming into season now and they'll die off by early May. And then you've got the berries coming into season in uh, you know, early, late summer, early autumn. They will last all the way through to November. Um, and they, they, do, they have the same indications. The berries are stronger because they contain more of the chemicals, but the flowers and the leaves in spring are still really potent, really effective, very evidence-based. So what we want to be doing, we want to be harvesting and drying loads of flowers and leaves now. That sees us through until autumn. Come autumn, we'll be making loads of hawthorn berry tincture, hawthorn berry leather, hawthorn berry preserves, hawthorn berry ketchups. That sees us through till spring. Come spring, we use the flowers again, ad infinitum. So we're continually tapping into the, the natural bounty that nature is giving us. Okay, and what's interesting, if you look at some of the longevity zones and you look at the, the research around these people that are getting to 95, 100, 105, really good health, independent, you know, cognitively fit, physically fit. In the European zones, one of the commonalities is that they, they have a high consumption of hawthorn. They, they chew on the berries, they use hawthorn berries, hawthorn flower teas. It's, a, it's just an integral part of you know, uh, the teas and the foods they drink. Um, so obviously we can't talk about hawthorn berries now because they're not in season. But if you signed up to the newsletters, what we'll give when you get the profile and all the PDFs, we'll give you all of the information for the flowers, so now, but we'll also give you all of the information for the berries. So come you know, August, September, October, November, you can make use of the berries, you've got the information you need. Um, so what are the benefits? What are the uses? Why is hawthorn berry and hawthorn flowers? Why? Are they so profound? Why are they so important? Why am I so hell-bent on getting as many people as possible to be using this herb? Um, because it is a, it, it, virtually every risk factor for cardiovascular disease is, is, is you know, clinically targeted by the chemicals that are found in Hawthorne. So what are the main issues? If we think about you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, irregular heart rhythms, irregular heartbeats. Hawthorne has the capacity to prevent and treat all of those. We know it lowers cholesterol. It's clinically proven to lower blood pressure. It's brilliant for regulating heart rhythm. So it prevents and treats palpitations, arrhythmias, things like that. Um, <clears throat> it optimizes the viscosity of the blood. It helps to prevent clots. It helps to prevent strokes. It helps to prevent heart attacks. Um, it's brilliant for reducing generalized heart risk factors. It improves circulation. It improves peripheral circulation, so it sends blood to the periphery. So it's great for things like poor circulation, varicose veins, hemorrhoids, Raynaud's disease, all of these kinds of, uh, kinds of issues. Um, it's, it's, um, it strengthens the heart. It strengthens the heart's ability to pump blood. It strengthens the walls of the arteries. It reduces inflammation in the arteries and the veins. You know, it, 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 it's used to treat and prevent angina. Um, you know, if you open up a cardiology pathology book, shut your eyes and land your finger on a page, the chances are Hawthorne Berry is gonna be helpful in preventing or treating what you land on. It's just a blanket, one-stop shop for preventing and treating, you know, pretty much anything that's going to go wrong with the heart and the cardiovascular system. But I think for me, it's in its preventative role where it becomes so powerful. If you've got any of these problems, if you've got high blood pressure, if you've got high cholesterol, if you've got irregular heartbeats, if you've got, you know, problems with blood viscosity, whatever it is, if you go and see a herbalist or you go and see an Ayurvedic practitioner or, a, you know, an integrative doctor or whatever, the chances are they're going to use Hawthorne in some capacity to treat you. Um, and that needs a little bit more of a one-to-one -one basis, particularly if you're on heart medicines. But if you're generally fit and well, maybe your, heart, your blood pressure's a little bit high or your cholesterol's, cholesterol's a little bit high, but you're not on medicine, you're not on prescription medicine, 
Hawthorne berry is just such a brilliant way of stopping that preventing, in, uh, sorry, turning into a pathological problem. And I, I, you know, if you just, if you ignored everything else that nature has to offer from April to November, and, and you know, ignore the nettles and the cleavers and the elderberries and the elderflowers and the comfrey, ignored everything. If you just foraged and used hawthorn berry through the year, then foraging would have been worth it for you. It would have paid, it will pay dividends, okay, because it's going to give you all of these evidence-based gains. So if you just, if you're busy and you, you, know, you watched yesterday's video and you watched Tuesday's video and you're really interested but you haven't had time, I would prioritise hawthorn. I would prioritise hawthorn flowers as your, you know, your first foray into foraging or if you've already foraged as a new target because it's so important. I can't... You know, I can't emphasize enough. I know I'm laboring the point, but that's because it's a point that's really worth laboring. We reduce our heart disease risk factors, we reduce our, we reduce our chances of premature death. And the regular intake of Hawthorne is a brilliant way of facilitating that. So Hawthorne, um, the Hawthorne tree is super easy to identify because it's got really unique leaves. It's got these beautiful three lobed leaves um, that you know that pretty much are unique um, in, in the hedgerows. Um, and the hawthorn is the most endemic you know species in British or in British hedgerows. You know, hawthorn comes from hedgethorn. The, in, in old English it was called hedgethorn because they were the, the hawthorn tree was planted to create hedging between dividing land, between fields, to keep animals in, to keep animals out, because it's got those nasty spikes on it. So Hawthorne, the original name for Hawthorne was Hedgethorn, and it, it changed to Hawthorne. Um, because of that, if you go anywhere, if you go into any um, you know, woods, cops, any rural area where there's, hedge, there's hedges, you're going to find Hawthorne, because virtually... You know, 50% of most hedges, you know, are, and hedgerows are hawthorn. So they can be small trees that are no more than four or five foot high. They can be 25 foot high. They can be stunted. They could be sprawling. They vary massively, but they're everywhere. You're not going to, even in cities, you're going to find a hawthorn tree. So the key thing to look out for is the beautiful, you can kind of see the three lobed leaves on the on the on the on the on the on the, on the twi uh, twig there. Um, the other thing is the flower. The flowers, you know, it's still really early. I wasn't expecting to find the flowers today. There were there were a couple of trees near us that were budding, but I thought they wouldn't be out in time for this week. So I was so over the moon when I saw this one solitary tree in blossom um, this morning. Beautiful, five, white, pink petals, five petals to a flower. Um, so you can, the thing with Hawthorne is you can use the leaves and you can use the flowers. Okay, so you want to go and just harvest, you know, a load of them. The best way of doing it is actually to take really sharp secateurs, snip off a load of branches like that with the flowers and the leaves on, um, take them home and then process them at home rather than trying to pick it all off in the field. It's, it's, it's more difficult, you lose a lot, it's a fact that the wind's blowing, stuff blows away. Whereas if you come home with you know, 20, 30, 40 branches like that, you can come home, you can process it on a table, it's easy, it's gonna give you a big haul. But the only thing is if you're harvesting branches like that, it's really important to do it in an ethical way. Don't take too much from any one tree. Um, and always make sure you leave plenty of flowers on any one tree because the flowers are what makes the berries. And if you pick all the, all the flowers, then that tree's not gonna have any berries, which is bad for the tree, it's bad for the bird, and it's bad for us, because come autumn, we're not gonna have as many berries to harvest. And the third thing is if you're harvesting twigs, always use secateurs. Don't ever snap them, break them, tear them, because it opens the tree up for infection. You want a really nice, clean, smooth cut, okay? Um, once you've got home, you've got all of these, all you need to do is just turn it upside down and just you can literally just you know um, scrape off all of the leaves and all of the flowers and you can you can so that's what that is that's just that's just the flowers and the leaves all combined okay so you, the, the flowers the leaves and the berries are all medicinal they all contain these cardiac um, phytochemicals these chemicals that support heart health like I've just spoken about so to use it you know, from now until mid-May, when they're in abundance, 
there's nothing quite like fresh hawthorn flower tea. It's got an aroma, it's got a taste that is just, it's just the epitome of British springtime. It's beautiful. Um, but obviously it's only a six, seven week window and then they all disappear. So I think drying as many hawthorn flowers and leaves as you can is time well spent. I think, I think it's one of those, like I said, it's one of those ones that to me is just mandatory. You just dry a couple of jars, a couple of kiln jars of the flowers and leaves. That will comfortably see you through until autumn and then the berries take over process enough berries to see you through till April. So you've got this rolling cycle. They're super easy to dry. Once you've got all your berry, all your flowers and leaves, all you need to do is get a tray or a, a, a tray from the oven. Oven trays are really good because they, they allow the air to circulate underneath it. And just place um, you know, a clean, dry muslin cloth, cheese cloth, even baking paper, paper, and then just sprinkle all of the you know, all of the leaves and flowers on top of that, making sure they're well dispersed so that the air can circulate. And leave that somewhere warm, somewhere dry, somewhere with good airflow. Um, usually takes a couple of weeks um, because they don't, they don't hold too much moisture. So it's not gonna take a month, like some herbs. Um, and then you know, the best way of testing whether it's dry is when you pick them up, if you rub them between your hands, they should crumple, they should just be like, really old dry parchment paper and that's the that's the cue that they're ready all you need to do then is just stick them in an airtight jar put them in a dark cupboard and that will last at least a year so you know if you get a couple of kilner jars you know you have maybe two cups a day so two teaspoons a day that's going to last you probably a year definitely till autumn so in terms of how you use it if you're using the fresh flowers if you're using the fresh flowers and the fresh leaves the dose is two teaspoons per cup of boiling water, okay? Because fresh herbs are weaker because they contain more water. So you always double the dose of a dried herb. So if you're going out, you go and collect a load of fresh flowers and leaves, two, two teaspoons into a cup, pour on boiling water, give it a good stir, um, and sip a couple of cups a day, even one cup a day. If you've dried it, it's one teaspoon per cup, one teaspoon per cup. Um, you know, into boiling water, same thing. You can add, there are other spring herbs that go really well with it. Um, once the elderflowers come out, elderflower and hawthorn flower is a brilliant, is a very good combination. Um, dandelion and hawthorn flowers is a very, very good one as you can, you can obviously combine and mix them all up. But the key thing here is just this heart protecting, heart supporting, um, um, prophylactic benefit of hawthorn. And the other thing I, I guess I didn't touch on because I got a bit carried away with the heart, um, but it's not just the heart that the hawthorn tree impacts upon. In, in, it's, in the same way it's used for the physical heart, hawthorn is also clinically indicated for the emotional heart. So it's clinically proven for things like grief, bereavement, um, post-traumatic stress disorders, acute stress, acute anxiety, panic attacks, so anything that you would associate with heartache, heartbreak, um, grief, you know, that kind of thing, you know, hot, strong hawthorn flower teas are a real nervous system comfort. They, you could, they almost induce a palpable sense of relaxation. Okay, we, if I think about the people we see in clinic who are going through you know, acute times of stress and upheaval and bereavement and grief and whatnot, you know, the first thing you think of is hawthorn. It's just what you do. Um, so it's brilliant for that, but it's also a great anti-inflammatory that has a natural affinity for the, the musculoskeletal system. So things like arthritis, sports injuries, gout, rheumatism, uh, really good for just reducing the inflammation that's responsible um, you know, for those kinds of problems. So it's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's a medicine chest on a tree, okay? Like, it always it, it always makes me chuckle that if you think about herbs that everyone knows about, echinacea, ginseng, ashwagandha, um, these kinds of things, if they were growing in the hedgerows, people would be out in their droves to harvest this stuff because they're exotic, they're a little bit more intriguing, they're unknown, I suppose, In you know, whereas hawthorn berry, it's, you know, it's just, it's just, it's everywhere, there's so much of it. And the fact that there are literally 
hundreds of millions of pounds spent every year in Britain on hawthorn flower and hawthorn berry supplements from, from you know, health food shops, to me is absolute madness where you could go out and you could get a year's haul and it's completely free. And it's not just free, it comes with all the other benefits of foraging. You get outside, you get the exercise, you get the vitamin D, you get the nature immersion, you get grounded with the seasons, all of these things. So if you just take one thing from this, this week series, please don't miss out on Hawthorne. Don't miss out on the flower season. Don't miss out on the berry season, okay? It's just, it's just one of those essential foraging components of the year. And actually, the reverence, just to put it into context, so if you look at the um, 17th, 18th century, the, the physicians, the herbalists, the healers in Britain, they were so dependent on and so reliant on, on hawthorn flowers and berries that in the spring and in the autumn, um, common workers, labourers, farm labourers, were paid the highest wages of the year to go out and forage for hawthorn flowers and hawthorn berries, and they were paid on the weight they, they brought back. So they brought back massive sacks of hawthorn flowers. Some of these labourers, these farm workers, were earning about three months worth of salary in a day because the herbalists, the physicians, the apothecaries were, were prepared to pay ridiculous sums of money to ensure they had enough hawthorn flowers and enough hawthorn berries to see them through 12 months in terms of their supply demand ratio. So that just goes to show the reverence with which Hawthorne was viewed you know, in Britain and Europe over the last 300 years. And that's, I guess, a reverence that we would do really well to replicate now and view it in the light that it should be viewed, which is just a powerful medicine that keeps our heart and our mind really fit, strong and healthy, okay? Um, so um, on the PDFs you'll get, it will list you know, the contraindications. The only ones to be aware of is that if you are on heart medicines, if you're on blood pressure medicines, um, things like digoxin, you know, heart rhythm medicine, things like that, then it's better to use hawthorn berry under, med under, under you know, professional supervision. Um, but hawthorn flower teas are going to be fine. Okay, a couple of cups of hawthorn flower tea is not going to do, it's not going to pose any risk. Um, you know, in terms of interactions, okay? So you could enjoy that without any worry, any concern, anything like that. So um, really safe, really effective, really powerful um, herb. Uh, like I said, if you sign up for the email newsletters tomorrow, you'll get um, all of this information, or later today, all the information, all the, the, the PDFs, the recipes, um, some brilliant recipes for hawthorn berry, something called hawthorn berry leather, which is amazing. Hawthorn berry ketchup is amazing. Hawthorn berry tincture, so you'll get all that information. Um, like I say, remember that our, for our, foraging, our foraging health course, the full online course, currently on offer, 50% off at only £47. If you want you know, everything, all the information right now in one go, then check that out on the website. Other than that, have a lovely day, everyone. Enjoy the, the sun, enjoy the spring. Get out, get your, well, actually, it's a bit early to get the hawthorn flowers, depends when you are, but get out and, and you know, keep your eyes out. Find your hawthorn trees so as soon as they come into flower, you can, you can start harvesting them and start making use of this powerful medicine, okay? So um, bear that in mind. Uh, other than that, have a lovely day, and I'll see you all tomorrow. So actually, tomorrow's a really important one as well, because we're talking about willow bark, which is, the most effective herbal painkiller we can get our hands on. So stay tuned for that. Have a good day and I'll see you tomorrow.